What's up guys, my name is Sawyer Hartman and today I'm here to compare the $1,000 Canon M5 vlogging camera to this $40,000 cinematic powerhouse of a camera, the Red Epic. Is it really worth all the extra cash? Probably not, but let's find out for sure. Okay, so to jump right into it, this is the Canon M5 mirrorless camera, and at only 2.2 pounds and $1,200 with a lens, this camera is actually capable of shooting 60 frames a second in 1080p, which is better than the 5D Mark III. So resolution aside, this camera has a built-in time-lapse mode, in-camera stabilization, decent low light, and a flip-down screen that when you look at it actually makes it look like you're looking into the lens. So no more checking yourself at the side of the camera every couple minutes. However, the best part about this camera to me is the small form factor, the built-in audio. Most Canon cameras have microphones on the side so they catch a lot of wind noise, whereas the M5 actually has two microphones right in the front so your voice comes through nice and crisp. And being the slow motion nut that I am, having 60 frames a second at 1080p in a vlogging camera that can literally fit in your pocket is just legendary. A few drawbacks before I get too excited though is this is not a full frame camera. This is actually an ASPC size sensor, which means if you want to use any of your fancy L-series Canon glass, you're actually going to be needing an extra adapter. Once you have the adapter, you're still not out of the clear though, because since it is an ASPC size sensor, it means it has a 1.6 crop factor. If you guys aren't familiar with crop factor, what that means is on this camera, a 35 millimeter lens does not actually look like a 35 millimeter lens. It actually looks more like a 56 millimeter lens on a camera with this sensor. That's not always bad. However, it does mean getting those super wide angle shots will be a little bit more difficult. And by a little bit more difficult, I mean extremely, extremely, extremely difficult because you can't find 12 millimeter at this without it being fisheye. But enough of that, that's technical. Also, this camera lacks any kind of cinematic shooting profile, so everything you shoot in camera is going to be a little bit more difficult to color grade. It's not that flat, you don't have that much dynamic range, and pretty much what you get out of the camera is essentially what your project is going to look like. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, we have this cinematic beast of a powerhouse camera, the Red Epic X. This camera has the ability to shoot 90 frames a second in 5K, 120 frames in 4K, all the way up to 300 frames in 2K, commonly known as 1080p. This is a 35 millimeter sensor camera, so a 50 millimeter lens will look like a 50 millimeter lens on this camera until you start cropping in to get higher frame rates. At 4K, there's a little bit of a crop. At 2K, there's almost a two times crop, so a 50 millimeter lens would look like a 100 millimeter lens. It gets really confusing, but that's not even the start of it with this camera. There is a lot to learn, understand, and just have to overall deal with. Now, a huge, amazing feature about this camera, and the reason that so many people love it, is it's modular, essentially meaning it's pretty much built like Legos. Handle comes off, lens comes off, back plate comes off. This means that no matter what your production, no matter what you're trying to shoot, there is a way to build out this camera to be able to do it. You just have to be able to have the budget. <laughs> so before I get into too much about what makes this camera amazing, let me highlight a few of the drawbacks about going with a larger format camera. Obviously, price. Seriously, just this brain part of the camera is between thirty and fifty thousand dollars. Essentially, this camera, although it might seem to be thirty to fifty thousand dollars, actually takes another twenty to thirty thousand dollars just to be able to start shooting on it. You need a lens mount, you need a monitor, you need batteries, you need memory cards. There is so many things that go into this camera that you don't exactly think about when you're first looking at purchasing. With a heavy camera comes heavier tripods, heavier steady cams, bigger lenses. The list on how this camera gets so heavy and heavy heavier and heavier every time you use it goes on and on. But if you're using this camera on a set with 50 people, you're gonna be fine. But if you're using this camera in the capacity that I am, on the go filmmaking and travel vlogging, and you're carrying this on your back with some lenses and a tripod, you are definitely going to be knowing it at the end of the day. Uh, by the time you're about my age, 27, you're going to be like this and complaining about your back all the time. But your films will look awesome. Third, memory. And not just memory cards, memory storage. Now on a full day of shooting, with the Canon M5, you're probably gonna shoot between 64 gigs and 100 gigs if you're going crazy. That exact same amount of footage on the RED camera though can easily add up to be over a terabyte. Now if you do that all the time and you're filling up a terabyte a day, that's about $200 a day of just hard drives on top of it and you can start to see how this adds up to be very expensive. But with that extra memory usage is actually something called shooting raw that I'll get into here in a second. It's freaking amazing, heavenly, and I think everything in the world needs to be raw. That's what she said. Get the merch. We love it raw. Just kidding. That doesn't exist yet, but it's actually probably a pretty good idea. The fourth and final drawback to this massive camera is it doesn't even have audio. That's right. It doesn't record sound. 
And even if it did, the fan's too loud to ever be able to hear it. Because it's tricky. And red, what the hell? Like, just put any kind of audio on this, please. Like, anything. Anything. My camera from 1999 had audio built into it. I mean, come on, this is... All right, so to change gears, it's not all bad with this camera, obviously, or not everyone would be using it. When it comes to video quality and image quality, this camera knows its stuff. The Red Epic, this Red Epic is actually like four years out of date. It gets 13 stops of dynamic range. You know when you're taking a photo on your iPhone and the person's either like really dark and the background's white or the background's like normal and then the person's dark? That is dynamic range. The more dynamic range, the more the background's able to look right with the person also being exposed properly as well. The new RED camera gets over 17 stops of dynamic range. The Canon M5 comes in way below at only 10 stops of dynamic range. More importantly than all of that, the RED Epic and all RED cameras shoot in RAW. Now, if you're a photographer, you know what RAW means, and if you're not, then you are in for a huge treat. Now, if you're used to shooting on a DSLR or a point-and-shoot camera or a camera that doesn't shoot RAW, then you know things like white balance, ISO, and a bunch of camera settings are pretty much burnt into your image. When you're out in the world shooting and you mess up your settings and you get home, there's not much you can do about it. And that's not RAW, because RAW takes all of the information in so that you can change those settings later. The only thing you have to do on RAW is be careful not to overexpose your image and all of the information will still be there. You can change things, white balance, ISO, it's all changeable, nothing is permanent, it's the best thing in the world for a filmmaker, especially if you're on a run and gun schedule and don't have time to always be getting your settings perfectly dialed in. That also means when you go into color correcting and color grading your footage, you have so much information to play with. That's the reason why red camera footage looks so beautiful once it's colored, because all of the information is still there so you can choose what you want to look like later. It's the magic of RAW. Other cameras just don't hold up. RAW is where it's at. It's the future. You can see I'm excited. It's really the only reason I still have this camera. When it comes to actual filmmaking, you want to be shooting RAW, and this camera does it flawlessly. So now, here are two images, one shot on the RED Epic, one shot on the Canon M5. Can you tell which is which? If you can't tell the difference, then save yourself $39,000 and go with the Canon M5 mirrorless. But if you can't stand to look at one and the other just brings you joy, well then you might be a future RED camera owner. Look, both of these cameras are intended for two very different types of cinematography. But now in this crazy new world of digital filmmaking and social media, the lines between amateur and professional are really starting to blur and you're able to create with whatever tools you want. And if both of these tools are accessible to you, I think it's very important that you understand the differences between between them. So tell me what you think. What's your dream camera and what do you want to shoot with it? Also let me know in comments down below if you'd like to see more filmmaking tutorials or reviews from me. You can leave the ideas down there. I will be reading them. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe for a new video every Sunday. I will see you beautiful people the next time I turn on my camera. Never stop creating. Bye guys. Uh -huh.